This is the new Lexus UX, and it's a little bit like me trying to do the... Yeah, this is embarrassing. Trying to do the floss. Essentially, Lexus is a very middle-aged brand, and it's trying to be all youthful. Isn't it, bro? Let's start this review by talking about the UX's design. And I must say, I really, really like the look of this car. The shapely lights at the back are super cool. I really admire Lexus for not trying to give it any fake exhaust pipes. Good on them. The thing I'm not so sure about though, is this gap here towards the back of the wheel arches, both on the back and the front. It just looks a little bit odd, but other than that, there's so many creases and cool lines on this thing. It's super, super cool. I also like Lexus's massive spindle grill. They look slightly different depending on which model you go for. This is the F-Sport version, so it looks a bit more sporty with a different coloured grill and some added vents over the normal car, which looks like this. It doesn't really matter which version you go for. This UX will definitely stand out. It's not just the outside of this car that looks cool, so does the interior. I mean, there's so much going on, so many shapes and contours, and it all just works. It really makes the interior of German SUVs seem just I mean, I really like this as well. This air vent, it's got like a shiny surround and it's got a brand name on it. It's kind of working for me, as is the leatherette on the dash and this red stitching. And yeah, there's plenty of soft touch materials about the place. To be fair, if you do go a bit lower down, things do get a bit cheaper and scratchy, but that, that's fine for this class of car. The centre console does wobble if you try and shake it. But I'm going to forgive Lexus because I know it won't actually break this car based on Lexus's reliability record. And generally, most of the controls feel nice and expensive and the steering wheel is lovely as well. Though it's slightly different depending on which model you go for. And that brings me on to this car's equipment list. As standard, the UX comes with satellite navigation. You also have climate control and an all singing, all dancing cruise control system, which can brake the car to keep you safe distance from the car in front and will automatically steer to keep you in lane to take the strain out of long journeys. Upgrade to the Esport model and you get 18 instead of 17 inch alloy wheels, electrically operated and heated front sport seats, and all round parking sensors plus a reversing camera. If you specify the Takumi pack, you then get a 10 inch rather than the normal seven inch screen, surround view cameras, and a Mark Levinson stereo plus a leather interior. Okay, let's continue this review by assessing this car's infotainment system. So this is the upgraded wider screen version. And I wanna choose my words very carefully how I describe it. This system is crap. <laughs> Let me elaborate. Basically, how everything is laid out is fairly confusing. It's more like a puzzle than an infotainment system. And then the way you control it is with this touchpad and it's overly sensitive and the mouse just like jumps around all over the place and it makes it really awkward and hard to use. It just does my head in. And then when you're trying to input a postcode, that takes absolutely ages and the routing itself isn't all that good either. It's an absolute weak point for this car. I mean, they really need to get this sorted. In fact, I think the tech guys at Lexus should click on the pop-out banner up there and follow the link below the video to watch my in-depth video review of the Audi Q3 to learn how to do an infotainment system properly. And that brings you on to the digital driver's display. Yet again, it's not as detailed or as big as the digital one you get in the Audi Q3, but there is something I like about it. And it's the way when you press this button, the central counter moves across to the side to reveal various different menu functions. That is cool. So is the fact that when you change the driving modes, it looks slightly different. It's also good the way Lexus has the driving mode button up here, so you don't have to take your eyes off the road. Same too for the stability control. In fact, the layout of the buttons in here is generally quite good. So you've got all your stuff for your heated seats and your climate there, all the things for your cameras there. Your opening buttons for the fuel filler cap, the boot and the bonnet are there. You can control the stereo and stuff over this side on the steering wheel. Then there's all the things for your driving aids there. The only thing that's a bit odd is that the main stereo controls are here in this weird pod that's a bit awkward to use and it's gonna be strange if your passenger tries to operate it because they're gonna start reaching across at you and you're gonna be like what the heck are you trying to do all very odd however what i can't fault are the seats lexus does brilliant seats and they're great in this car also like this look we've got an electronically operated steering column yeah it's easy to find a nice driving position in this car and then practicality is okay as well like some decent sized door bins there and i like this feature so the Centre console opens that way, it's pretty big, but you can also open it that way if your passenger wants to get into it. And inside there, you have some USB ports and an auxiliary in. But look at this, this is showing the fact that Lexus is basically designed for older people because there's an area there for their cash money. And then another area there, which I suppose you can keep the memory card 
no idea. As for the cup holders, well, they're big enough, so yeah, you can fit decent sized bottles in them, and they're not so deep that a small cup of coffee will end up knocking its lid off. However, it's a bit annoying that there's no way to hold an energy drink can securely or rattle around in there. Though there is some storage there for your mobile phone, and this car has the wireless charging feature. Yay for that. Finally, there's the glove box, which is not very big, really. Shame, the rest of it's quite practical. The Lexus UX isn't the best here in the back seat, so I'm just about okay. I've got enough headroom and knee room's all right, but someone with longer legs are gonna have their knees touching the seat in front. You can sort of put your feet underneath the seat in front, even if they have the seat low down, but it's still not great for stretching out. I do like the fact that the seat base is nice and deep though, so you have lots of under thigh support and the seat back's comfy. Once again, here in the back, just like the front, Lexus does good seats. What it doesn't do at all in the back of this car though, is door bins, look. There's none at all. So if you want to carry bottles, you have to fold this down and then use that. That means you won't be able to give someone a lift in the middle seat though. But you won't want to anyway, because three in the back of this car is not great at all. It's quite a narrow cabin, so you'll feel a bit squashed. But the worst thing is that those on the outer seats end up having their heads bashed up against the grab handles. Really not good at all. And that brings me on to how dark it feels in here. So the outside looks sporty, but the trade-off for that is that you've got small rear windows, which make it feel a little bit dungeon-like. At least the windows do go all the way down though. However, because the window ledge is quite high, smaller children won't be able to get a good view out. And by the way, Lexus, what's with scratchy plastic up here? Why can't we have soft touch door covers like in the front? It's making me feel like I'm in the cheap seats. Last thing to note is that you do have a couple of charging points for your mobile devices down here. And for some reason, Lexus gives you one seat back pocket, but not two. Don't know why. The UX's worst feature is perhaps its boot because it's actually smaller than a Volkswagen Golf. So, I mean, take a look at that. There ain't much room in there. Now, I do like the fact that there's no load lip to lift stuff over. The problem is, is that the boot is quite high, so you really do have to lift things quite a way up. So, that's going to be really awkward as well if you've got an old dog that needs to jump into the back. Let me just move that out of the way. Now, you do have some more storage underneath there. However, if you have the four-wheel drive version, it has an electric motor in the back, which kind of takes up all that space. Also, if you have a spare wheel, it takes up that space. There are a few other storage areas just in there for bits and a weird shaped one in there for some more bits. You do have some hooks to hang stuff off, like your shopping stuff, it rolling around when you're cornering. There's a 12 volt socket for maybe a vacuum cleaner for hoovering out the boot and some other like hooks and tethering points there. It's not ideal. It's quite easy to fold down the rear seats. And as you can see, look at this. When you do, they lie pretty much completely flat, which does make it easier. Once you lift the things up again, <laughs> to slide stuff all the way to the front of the car. But how much stuff can you actually fit in this UX's boot? Well, in two-seater mode like this, there's space for two large boxes, six small boxes, and a soft bag. You'll also be able to fit a bike in with all its wheels attached, though you will have to angle the front wheel upwards to make sure it doesn't get caught by the boot lid. With the rear seats in place, there's space for one large suitcase, one small suitcase, and a soft bag beneath the UX's logo cover. However, you'll have to remove the low cover if you want to fit a baby buggy in there or a set of golf clubs because you'll need to angle the bag upwards slightly. Anyway, on to five annoying things about this Lexus UX. Hey Lexus, the 1980s wants its sunroof back. I mean, look at it. It's like something off an ancient car. And for some reason, you have one button for opening the sunroof and another one to tilt it. It's like they couldn't work them in together like every other manufacturer. And like with most cars, which automatically unlock the fuel filler cap when the doors are open, not on the Lexus, you have to press a button inside the cabin every single blooming time. Now, if I was a PR for Lexus, I might claim that's because the car uses so little fuel that thieves will know there's a full tank pretty much always in there. But obviously that'd be utter b This part of the dashboard sticks out quite a way. So if you've got long legs and you need to get the car in a hurry, you can end up, ow! Hanging your knee on it. Ow. Because of the hybrid system, you can sometimes forget that the ignition is on because you can't hear the engine running because it's just in electric mode. And you can hop out the car with the keys on you and think everything's fine, walk away, and if it's noisy, you won't hear the beeping warning sound and someone could just nip into your car and then they could be off. What the heck are you doing? The clip which holds up the bonnet brace is actually really vicious. To undo it, you have to just pull on there and then it snaps back on your thumbnail. Ah! 
really hurts. I don't know what it is with this video, but this car is attacking me. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. Lexus has come up with a real clever solution for the low cover. So it may look flimsy, but that's for a reason, because if I undo it and remove it from these little clips here, then you just squidge it together and it folds up neatly like that. And then you simply put it in this handy little bag. Ah, but that's not all. You see, you can store that easily under there, but let's say you want to load that up with lots of heavy stuff. There's this little cord here that you just undo like that, and then you just simply hang it up there. Then you can load things in to your heart's content. Some special soundproofing material has been fitted inside the wheel arches, which is specifically designed to deaden the noise of water getting splashed up against the inside from the wheels when it's wet. The 360 degree camera you can get with this car does this really cool kind of fly around mode like that. So you can look around the car, but even have a special curb view. So you don't curb your alloy wheels. And look, you can even do this. If I go up there, I can change the color of the car in the image if I want to. Now it should be gray. And yes, it is. The shape of the lights with their contours and this little fin here, which on the back of the wheel arches, are all there to help improve the car's aerodynamics. I really love the speed of these electric windows and how they slow down for the very last part of their travel. I'll show you now. Super satisfying. Oh. Right then, now it's time to see what this Lexus UX is like to drive. I'm going to start off within town. So I've actually got the car in EV mode. So as long as you've got enough charge in the battery, it'll coast along at lower speeds in electric power alone, as long as you don't press the throttle too hard. If you do, then the engine kicks in, but it's quite seamless. And then it sort of takes off a little bit. And then when you back off, it'll just go into electric only mode as well. And that means it's really quiet. I'll tell you what else is good about this car. You can go over bumps and you don't really feel them that much. The suspension is nice and smooth. The steering when you're just in normal mode is super light as well. And this car has a very good turning circle, nice and tight, really good for doing U-turns around many roundabouts. Also being an automatic, that makes it super easy to drive. And the gearbox doesn't really have any normal gear, so you don't feel it changing. It just does its thing of moving you along. The brakes are all right as well. They can be a bit jerky in hybrids, but not in this one. That's something to do with the regenerative system, but yeah, not a problem here with this Lexus UX. Now I'm gonna try and park it though. Am I gonna be having a bit of a problem with that? The view at the back is not great. That huge rear pillar is a bit of a nightmare. So I'm gonna be relying on the sensors and the cameras for this one. The light steering once again helping me out here. The car isn't overly large, so it's actually all right to slot into spaces. Yes, those parking sensors are a little bit pessimistic because I've got loads of room. That fits quite easily. Let's get out of here, see what this thing's like at higher speeds. This UX is fairly decent on the motorway, so it feels planted at speed, which is good. Also, the seats are super comfy, which is great for long distance cruising. There's not much wind noise, but you do notice a bit of noise from the road, which can get on your nerves. What also gets on your nerves is when you come to overtake something. So I'm doing 50 miles an hour, I'm gonna floor it. Yeah, the gearbox is picking up. Can you hear that noise? <laughs> it's like a washing machine on spin cycle. It's because the engine just holds its revs at a constant rate and the gearbox increases the speed for you. So it's a little bit odd and the engine just goes, Mah! which is a bit annoying, but uh, no, it's generally quite relaxing. In terms of the economy, no, I can't fault that. This thing's averaging 45 miles per gallon. Yep, that's the benefit of going hybrid. Finally then, we're on a twisty road. So let's see just how sporty this sporty looking Lexus UX is. So I'm gonna put the engine and steering into its sportier setting, the gearbox into sports mode. I'm even gonna control the gears myself using the paddles. And here's a corner. Don't feel anything to the steering really. It's going round. Now it's starting to wash wide a bit and the ESP's stopping me spinning off the road. It doesn't lean much through a bend, so you don't get car sick and it's all right, it's just, in no way fun, in no way fun, like a BMW X2 can be. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Lexus UX? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? 
Well, I reckon you should consider the Lexus UX. I think it's a really cool looking car. It's just that other small posh SUVs are more practical and have better tech.